All right, so this is going to be pretty much the opposite of Joe's talk. Um, <laughs> I think it was good that I went after him because most of what I'm going to talk about um, is probably like really the reason why this doesn't work, having Urbit MMOs. Um, and that's because networking on Urbit is kind of difficult. <laughs> and the only reason why I'm attempting it is that I don't really know anything about Urbit's networking. Um, it's kind of uh, nice to be, you know, sort of naive about this stuff sometimes because you can find some interesting things. Um, and so what I've been doing for the past, like, three years um, is building this sort of MMO that already exists, right? It, it is an old Korean-style MMO. Um, and it's, it was, uh, I guess, decompiled or someone figured out, someone stole the code base, right? And uh, people, people started running private servers. Um, and those private servers have been running for almost like 10 to 12 years. Uh, there's a few of them that are more, that are more populous than the actual like, official servers. Um, and so I tried to port this to Urbit. And so I started when I like, really didn't, I wasn't very good at, at writing Hoon. Um, I'm still not very good at writing Hoon. Uh, but I think now it's, it's finally come to the point where I can actually like, release it soon. Um, and so this is kind of just an overview of everything that I've done so far, um, how I approached it, and what I would do differently. Um, so I'm calling SSO RPGs are small and shitty online role-playing <laughs> games. <laughs> this, is, this is kind of what I think Urbit games are going to be like for a long time. Um, maybe not the shitty part, but at least the small part. Uh, I think. There is a lot uh, that makes the massively multiplayer aspect of video games not as interesting on Urbit, uh, because you kind of get to curate your own sort of small community. Um, and we, we've seen that in most groups, right? Like, there are, there are a few groups that I'm in that I really like that don't have very active um, conversations, right? Like, maybe once or twice a week, there's a you know, thread that's like 20 messages long, and that's it. Um, this is like kind of a sign that your community is, is going down the tubes on most other uh, Web2 platforms. But on Urbit, it's like we have this sort of confidence that uh, this is going to stick around. And so you're OK with just you know, having, having a small user, user base, um, even if it's just like a chat room. right? So I kind of want to turn that into um, where you can hang out on, you know, in, in a capital city in some random MMO. right? Um, I don't know if any of you guys played WoW, but in WoW, people used to sit in like on the Ogremar bank um, and just like chill there. And if if you had like really cool armor, um, you know everyone would think you're sick. And uh, and then you know you'd get into guilds and you'd make friends. And one of the things that uh, I used to play Eve Online. And Eve Online um, had a really it was basically an Excel spreadsheet, but as a game. Um, you know, you, I basically watch like a ship just mine an asteroid for hours when I was a kid, um, and just calculate the like, uh, you know, rate of, of like how much iron I was getting, um, and then I just get robbed by pirates uh, when I went to Joda. Um, and so, so I think like that sort of, uh, I really enjoyed getting robbed um, <laughs> because <'cause> it was <laughs> it was just like so. I mean, I I hated it at the time. Like I was really upset and. It was like thousands of dollars worth of time and actual like virtual items. Um, you could buy these like time uh, subscriptions, right? So and they were an actual item, like it was a, a monthly uh, fee, right? The I the actual item in the game was the a thing you would cash in to keep playing the game, um, but you could you could get robbed. <laughs> you basically literally get robbed of your ability to play the game. Um, but this was all managed by a big corporation that actually did it really well. Probably the best. Uh, MMO gaming corporation there is. Um, they have a, a really, I think they have 20, 30,000 people on a single server. They have a really interesting um, server architecture. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's still a really big centralized game that just falls apart the minute you want to like do something custom, right? You have to kind of follow these set routes um, that either the community or the devs prescribe for you. Um, so by being small and shitty, you can kind of uh, subvert that a bit. Because um, I, I think with, with Urbit, you, know, you have a lot, of, a lot of people who are OK with building apps that just kind of suck. 
Um, <laughs> but they're really like, I'm not looking at you, pal, but <laughs> yours are amazing. <laughs> um, I'm looking at myself, really. I, I, I just ripped off um, PalFun's Pals app once uh, and just turned it into a fart app. When all you would do is you would uh, send you know, friend requests to other people and it would just play a fart sound. That was the only difference between my app and, and Pals. Um, <laughs> except it also stored a, a big um, fart MP3 in your loom. So everyone, everyone who downloaded this app has a, has a giant fart in their loom. So. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so uh, motivation behind these things. Um, this is actually serious here. I think that there are really interesting ways in which Urbit's networking stack can enable fundamental innovations. Um, one of those ways is the, the transfer of um, servers across like time, basically, in that like, if a company stops supporting a game, um, ideally, uh, they haven't monetized that game as like, a, oh, I'm selling it like a, like a disc. Like, it's more like you're, you're selling the sort of experience that you have a renderer for, and that renderer can be switched in and out. Um, and so uh, the, the way that I did this with Odyssey, um, which is the, the Ragnarok thing that I'm building, is that I, um, I have kind of two versions of it. One is the browser version. That's just the old client, the old Ragnarok client, same as the, as the old game. Um, and the other is a text-based uh, text like CLI entry point into it. And so you can, you can do a limited amount of things um, on the CLI, but those things are reflected in both worlds, right? So like, it's kind of like as if you had like a, a bot for an MMO, right? If you run that bot, like you kind of are playing the game in some sense. You have a different interface into it. Um, most bots uh, don't have like the actual graphical interface. They just have like a stream of logs telling you what it's doing. Um, one of the interesting parts about Ragnarok was that it's all packet based. So that means um, like they just, you would just send packets over a TCP socket and that would, be, that would influence the game. Um, that's how you moved, that's how you attacked, that's how you did anything. Um, they used to not encrypt them uh, early on. And so when everyone would just figure out what packets meant what and then just um, write scripts to, to sort of either bring down you know, the whole server or just uh, grind on, like there was, there was these uh, plants that you could just hit over and over and get um, herbs out of and people would just you know, write scripts to, to do that. Um, and so I think this is actually very fun. Um, and I think that like, the, there are people who wanna, who wanna build the sort of um, theme park uh, video games where you just have a really prescribed route that you take, and um, you kind of, if you if you deviate from that route, it's just it, it feels off. It feels like you're you're sort of not um, watching the same movie anymore, um, and that feels weird when when it's built like that. Um, but whenever I played games, I kind of wanted to do exactly that, where I wanted to see where like the the uh, weird glitches are, right? Where if you kept walking, you know, past the the boundary line, like everything would look weird, and you could see how the um, like the mountains were rendered, and you wouldn't mount, uh, render the one the the part below like a certain like distance because you knew that no one would ever be able to see that. Um, and so, having having MMO um, sort of like base framework MMO architecture on Urbit um, will be really nice because you kind of offload the renderer to uh, you know other developers, right? And I feel like this is kind of a, a strategy that that many urbiters kind of take now is like you, they build a thing that maybe they have a minimal UI for, but it kind of um, exposes a protocol that people can use to um, enhance like, you know, their own experience on Urbit. Like Palfun's um, auto thing yesterday. Like you can basically write bots now if we have a, if we have a gaming framework on Urbit. You can respond to like specific maybe friend requests on pals um, and have that like reflect in game um, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe you friend them in game, maybe, that, maybe it actually hooks up to pals directly, right? Like, there are, there are tons of different things you can do here um, that, that, like, just having a traditional renderer, which is kind of what I'm calling, like, the, the client of, of a video game, um, being able to, to render these urbit native things there um, would be really, really nice. Uh, so there's also the, the aspect of, of security and privacy, but uh, this is not real, right? Like, <laughs> um, there's not a lot of security um, and not a lot of privacy on Urbit beyond what, um, what you like give yourself. 
And I think that's, that's kind of the bigger point here, is that running your own server kind of uh, forces you to think about things you wouldn't think about if you just were logging into you know, Blizzard's uh, battle.net every day and saying whatever you want on their chat. Um, I'm sure there are many people here who have gotten banned doing exactly that. Uh, and I am one of those people. Um, <laughs> So yeah, direct peer-to-peer -peer communication and eventual sharding. I think this is really interesting because one of the, the annoying things about, about uh, MMOs would be you would have to like, uh, like when something, some big event happens in game and it, the, the server limits start getting hit, you can't do what you, were, what you wanted to play the game to do, right? You have to basically either wait in a queue or um, you know, uh, just go to bed or something. Um, and and it, it, it sucked because it's like this is a game that you paid for and now you can't play it. Um, on Urbit, like there's there's this opportunity to just play locally, right? Like kind of turning these these MMO experiences into like basically LAN parties um, is is a much more interesting thing to me. Uh, that and you don't have to you don't have to depend on these these giant servers that that have to serve thousands of customers. Um, but again, this can't happen without an actual game, right? Um, so. This can't happen without an actual game, right? You don't you don't own anything if if there's not anything to experience it with, right? Um, and so this is this is the problem with NFTs right now is that everyone wants a game, no one can actually build one. Um, and so these are some of the things that I've I've wanted to build for a while. Um, some some people have already started building them, uh, like the chat. There is a chess app, there's a Go app, um, but there's no turn-based strategy games yet. <laughs> um, Vaporware is actually uh, one, of the, one of the only people building like, games right now um, for ulterior motives, I guess. But uh, it's, still a, it's still a game and it's still fun. So um, this is kind of, it was interesting. I, I joined Vaporware like uh, before I decided to, or after I decided to do this talk. And I didn't know that they were building a game. Um, I just thought they were building, you know, sort of uh, NFT marketplaces to I don't know, try to get a lot of money into Urbit or something. Sounded cool, but like, I didn't know it was like anything more than that. Um, it turns out that like the market mechanics, like social mechanics of, of Urbit are really um, amenable to the, the sort of things we don't like about NFTs, right? Like the, the, the shilling of NFTs that I was very guilty of at Assembly 2021, um, it, be, it becomes like a much more uh, interesting prospect when the things that you're shilling have, have actual consequence on the network that you spend all of your time on, right? Um, and so all of these games here, um, they can all be augmented by the things that you do both on chain and on Urbit. So even just the simple existence of like a couple of, of old Goras could uh, mean that your character in you know, one server just has like you know, OP stats and you can just murder everyone in, in you know, Prontera or whatever, right? Like there's, there's these very um, uh, real consequences of being like really active on the network now um, that I think, that I think a, a game will just sort of blow up, right? Uh, so problems. Um, good games are hard to build. Um, I think everyone knows this, but I think the, the, second, the second point is more salient. Um, everyone wants these like really, really nice AAA graphics games, um, and if you, if you ship them a you know, Pong, um, they're not gonna play it, right? Um, I, and this is what people think. I actually think it's not true if you have a really, really good game, right? So a, a good example of this is is um, the Ragnarok stuff, right? There's a, there's a reason why people still play this game in 2023 when it was released 23 years ago. Um, and that's because there's, there's a, an actual like, social dynamic that it sort of enables um, and a uh, like, pleasurable grinding experience, um, which I don't, I don't think, I, I can't really put that into words and you know, people probably think I'm crazy right now, but like, there's like, the, the idea of just like Korean you know, experience grinding, gold grinding, was like pretty much what gave me my work ethic. Um, <laughs> so I would, I would just sit there and like, just swing away at, at, at orcs uh, in a dungeon for 
six, seven hours, and it was really easy to go from that to just like, you know, programming for longer, right? <laughs> this is how, how I kind of treat programming. It's, it's why a lot of my code is super messy, because it's just brute force, right? Like, there's this um, really, like, stupid way I go about building stuff that I think actually allows, allows me to, like, get to places that uh, and I think most smart people wouldn't get to, because they're just like, what the hell? Why would I ever try that? Um, so this is a good example of it. Um, I, let me see if, yeah. <laughs> um, this is my solution to uh, uh, the MMO problem on Urban, it's shameless knavery. And so I called this, I call the style of programming that I, I've been uh, using to build this parasitic programming. Um, and that's because I do exactly the opposite of, of what, um, what Joe would probably want me to do. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's I don't, I, I have a tiny, tiny Mars agent, um, tiny Gaul agent uh, that runs next to, on the same server as a, uh, just a standard game server, right? Like uh, the one that, that runs Ragnarok is C++ and it's really fast. Um, it was, since it was made in the early 2000s, it's still just like parsing packets and not, doesn't have any logic that's, uh, you know, very complicated. It still just like indexes into the bytes um, of the packet. It has giant if statements that, that just fill the screen. It has macros that, that, that um, only run certain code based on the, the packet version, which is versioned by like the literal date of, of the release of that version of the game. Um, and it's just huge trees of this, right? But it's simple. Um, and, and you can actually build against it um, without wanting to kill yourself. Um, so, so this is, this is sort of like a generic example of, of what you could do um, if you wanted to do something similar. And it's not, it's not complicated. Literally, you just hijack whatever thing that you wanted to, um, that you want to have on Urbit. An, an, another example that I did recently was with GatherTown. Um, I just used Selenium to pull in the, um, uh, the, the chat logs of, of the Gather Room, right? And I filtered it for um, whoever was DMing like a, a bot that I had put in there. And then that bot um, was responding, or sorry, Selenium was, was then sending requests to the Urbit Planet associated with that bot. So that would be like the, the, the client, right? And then it would um, play music uh, based on what command you gave it, right? So this was like the Spotify client that I, that I made a while back. Um, and I, made, I got that working on Gather by just doing something similar. Um, it's not ideal. I don't like want to do this in the future, um, but I, I feel like a lot of a lot of herbiters kind of forget what is possible, um, what what like we actually want to do, um, and, and we end up just like complaining about you know what herbit can't do, um, but actually it can do a lot of these things. You just have to you know be gross and dirty for a little bit. Um, so yeah, stage two would be uh, this is this is. This took me about like six months, and then I um, I implemented uh, I implemented graph store integration into uh, the Ragnarok client like about a month before graph store disappeared. Um, so that was really fun. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, but like, yeah, you can do this, right? Like, it's it's really interesting to um, communicate with people on Urbit on a on a client that wasn't built for Urbit. So like everyone's used to, to doing things on you know, landscape, right? Um, there's pretty much, landscape or the dojo are the only things that, that people really know. Um, but I don't know if anyone remembers, I did this Emacs thing like a while back um, where I had a whole landscape clone um, in Emacs. And, and so I could like split windows, I could copy text, right? Like I know it's crazy, you can actually copy text in Emacs and I guess browsers just aren't are bad at it, I don't know. Um, but, but yeah, so it was, uh, there's a real like way in which you can be on Urbit and have it be your own thing. Um, and I, I just feel like people, people should try it more. People should try to like bring something uh, from Earth into Urbit and, and see what happens. Um, so this was another thing I did. Uh, so building simple sale pages, right, HTML pages um, as, as clones of, like sort of static clones of, of the state of your game. Um, and then having those, those static clones um, sort of be an element of the game itself um, 
from the other side, right? So, so you can have things like, um, you know, like a marketplace, right, that you can see on, on your uh, orbit planet. Um, and then if someone buys something there, it would reflect in game. And um, you, can, you can basically like build out a sort of uh, like 2D version of the, of the game that you can play like on your phone. Um, this is something that like people in uh, like the traditional gaming world try to do all the time. And it takes them a long time and they usually fail. Um, because it's, it's, you can't just pull in um, data that, that exists in, in, a, in a good state, right? Like this is what's nice about Urbit is the minute you define your structures, um, you can use them across many different apps. And those apps uh, don't have to be anywhere near the same as the ones that were um, originally defining them. And, and so like PALs uh, could, could easily be something completely different. It could be foes, right? Um, and, it, it could, but it could still use the exact same um, protocol. Um, so yeah, and then finally, you would want to actually write the game logic in, in the server. Um, so this is, where, this is where Odyssey is now. Um, it's, right, I already kind of went over a lot of this. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's two agents. There's a, there's a server agent called Odyssey, and then there's uh, another called Midgard. Um, that, that, the Midgard um, desk ships an actual like full, really large front end to you. Um, I've ended, I'm doing it with S3 now because I don't want to brick your aims. Um, but maybe, maybe when I can send big nouns over the network, I will. Um, and so this, this is literally just a renderer. Um, so I have a, a generic description of, of the, uh, how, how the game should look as much as, as much as I've been able to pull from, um, from literally playing the game. Um, and this, this is sort of like, the, the, like dog fooding the actual um, rendering logic is I just play the game until I see something that like, I could represent on Urbit. And then I pull that into Urbit um, and update it whenever it updates on the server side, right? And so there's many things that this doesn't work well for, right? You don't want to update every single move on Urbit. Um, I don't think it, it would even be possible. But it would be, it's nice to, to uh, store, say, every open items, item shop in every city, right? Because then you can represent those things outside of the game and then attach them to stuff like NFTs. So this is how you get really quickly um, a full like NFT game without ever really meaning to. Um, and, it, and it doesn't have to be based around like the, these weird financial economics of NFTs. Um, it can just be a game with NFTs that you can buy. Um, and so you don't have to have like these microtransactions. You can have peer-to-peer -peer transactions um, that, that yes, might not make like the company that built the game very much money, but the company that builds these, these sorts of games should not be making much money anyway because they should be really simple. Um, and you should let the, the people who play them build the rest of it. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like a, a overview of the um, stages that I went through doing this. Uh, I, I originally had it directly um, put, uh, inserting into a, a MySQL database um, and that I was running a REST server in front of so that I could communicate with it over HTTP because um, that's all I knew how to use Urbit um, as, as like a sort of Earth communication agent. Um, stage three, um, this is the most interesting thing. Uh, this is something that I, I wanted to demo today, but I couldn't get, I couldn't get the new binary compiling. <laughs> um, but, Lick is a um, very interesting protocol that allows you to just send um, marks or mark and nouns pages over the, over a, a socket, a Unix socket. And like I said, this this Ragnarok Online was a, a packet-based game. So if I could just re redefine or, or define the, the packets in Urbit, which is really easy because Urbit is really good at byte manipulation, um, and so. If I want to parse these uh, packets into like small little bits with um, all the information about what, what is changing in the game, um, it's almost trivial to do this on Urbit and really, really annoying to do in like C++. And so I started defining these, the packets that I wanted to, to basically have the server use as a, as a communication pattern and started looking exactly like you know, sending agents to, or send, sending moves to an agent. And so this is how I kind of started thinking about like, um, this sort of uh, parasitic development thing is that um, any anytime you can get uh, something looking like just a black box that you send events to that changes and then responds back 
um, you can pretty much bring that into Urbit, and, and it kind of naturally falls into place. Um, so yeah, this is, this is when I'm gonna release it. Um, I'm gonna have user scripting in Hoon and, and game logic in Hoon, which means um, you should be able to write plugins with it. Um, and so you can write your own games with, with uh, this library. You can write your own servers with this library. You don't have to use the, the server that I'm using. Um, you can just use the uh, sort of game definitions um, and change what you need. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is, this is something that I'm, I really want because I feel like this will be the next, uh, the next big thing. Because um, I basically have all these uh, rendering definitions but no way to render them. And they're also probably the wrong rendering definitions. Um, so I'd like to use the right ones and that's probably Goon. Um, but I don't know where Liam is, so. <laughs> um, this was another thing I was thinking about, the, uh, a sprite-based 2D rendering engine. Um, I think we need, well, 2D rendering is not that hard, so we might not need like any vector math for this. Um, but I don't know what the status of, of the vector library is in Urbit. I, is it still a PR? I don't know. Well, do you know? We're, we're working on it. Yeah? Yes. Awesome. Um, once that happens, I feel like we can actually start doing some of this logic. Um, and I think we'll quickly come, um, like we'll quickly see uh, limitations, right? Because Herbit is slow. But it's, it's nice to push, those, uh, push on those things and, and see what, what you can do with, with some of the slowness. Um, yeah, development of, of cross-game universes. Um, this is kind of what I talked about already. Um, I think that there's, there's quite a bit. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, no one is trying to hack Urbit, I think, is that no one has any money in Urbit. Um, and no one wants to put their money into Urbit. But I think that if you, if you try to generate you know, game value on Urbit um, and you know, sort of build these sort of fake economies, people end up turning them real eventually. And then things actually become valuable. And then people will want to hack us. And I think that's a good state to be in. Um, I feel like we need to prove that, that you know, we're not like we're, we're, we're a valuable project to try to hack. It's really boring where it's like everything is open and no one's trying to steal my stuff. Um, <laughs> it's like we, we've, had, we've had software distribution for two years now and I still haven't, like nothing bad has happened. And that's, uh, that's terrible. <laughs> um, yeah. hmm? Exactly, yeah, we need more PVP. Um, so yeah, the last thing is there is, um, every group becomes a guild on, on this game and so all of the biggest groups uh, will uh, de facto own all the guild castles in Ragnarok, um, which means that once this is released, you'll have to defend them. Um, otherwise, you lose your rune knight status. Uh, so, Zorp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's it. Any questions? How do I play it? Where's my <laughs> button? Um, so it's just going to be like you, you install it on your ship. Uh, it'll, the, it'll be an S3 link that you'll have to, I, I mean, it'll probably just be a glob, actually. Um, and then I'll probably tombstone it. Uh, but yeah, so it'll just be, it's just a browser game. Um, I have to be running the server, though. Um, so until, until I can make it completely decentralized, there's going to be that component to it. Um, but I'm also going to be shipping the server um, so that probably for sale, actually. Uh, but if, if, if you want, you can run your own server. And I'm, I'm using Lick to uh, actually coordinate this, the bringing it up. So kind of like a, a Nix, a, a really shitty Nix um, <laughs> through Urbit, which it's, it, you can actually do this because Urbit is Nix, according to Hacker News. So. <laughs> 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 uh, what does Aries mean to you? I mean, it would make this possible, right? <laughs> um, I mean, it would make it would turn the small and shitty into massive and multiplayer. Um, I, but I think it's nice to start somewhere, and I think there's no no reason why we can't get a head start on some of this stuff. Um, I think this is what all of us at Urban have been doing for a while now, and we can kind of like talk about it a little bit more and be a little bit like com more confident that this stuff will actually help later, rather than just you know be rewritten underneath us. Uh, in a couple of years, but it's still mine, I don't know. 
Uh, so Lick is the uh, like vein formerly known as uh, Lock, right? That mm-hmm. uh, Mopful Win- WinRx is working yes. on. Would that also allow you to like draw things directly on the screen? Yeah, so I was thinking about that too. Um, I, and this was what, what got me thinking about the 2D sprite renderer. Um, I think that would be the easiest first step. Uh, it would be really cool to like have, have a, basically like a, a Twitch stream style thing where you could you know, look at Herbit traffic and then just like render um, you know, stuff on some sort of stream that, that uh, you, know, you just subscribe to. Um, and every, every person who plays, it, who plays the game has like, you know, I don't, they generate entropy that then gets written to, to you know, some. And then that, that input could then be used as, or that output could be used as input into the game. And then, and then it becomes like a randomization um, mechanic. Uh, like using the urban network as sort of this way of, of um, basically building content from the randomness almost, um, I think is, is one of the most fascinating things we could do. Um, something that's like uh, occurred to me before, is this maybe like apropos both like the, the rendering engine and um, but also kind of like, uh, maybe like physics and so on, yeah. right? Um, is that uh, obviously, you don't want to do have a physics engine running in the event loop. Um, Why not? But uh, so, I mean, with respect, like Goo Native UI, I mean, like a large part of it is kind of um, uh, uh, you know, s- s- certain stuff can be sort of like dynamically sort of yeah. like rendered. You're, like, you're specifying like a sort of scribe path. Yeah. But also include like sort of like range query, um, and so <clears throat> it's not necessarily necessary that like. Um, a state change would necessarily need you to like write out a new like goon tree. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, if, if, is the sort of rendering that you have maybe like uh, that you've thought about that kind of like similar to that? So and like a, a similar thing would be kind of like. I mean, because it's urban, it's like I'm always trying to namespace everything. Um, so the renderer is a tree. Um, it's it's based off of one of uh, Liam's old uh, goon things. I'm not sure if he's still using that model or not, um, but it's yeah, it's just a tree. Um, I'm using Sail to render it right now, um, mm. and, uh, and you kind of just have it's, it. Only works for certain parts of the game, and th- so there are small parts that. Um, so, for example, you can uh, sell items, um, and, and when the way you sell items is that you have to have a character in the game that, that spawns a shop, and then you have to stay in game, and so I just kind of hijack that and. You, you still have to stay in game, but you're in game as this like sale render, right? And uh, that sale render you can interact with both in the game as the normal you know, way that the, that whole uh, part was built, but you can also interact with it um, on like, like a landscape channel almost, um, where you have like a, basically your sort, sort of shop, right? Um, and mm-hmm. you can like ch- choose items from your inventory and move them back and forth, and it's like this really like 2D style um, uh, way of, of of rendering what is also being rendered at the same time on on the uh, the server, right? Um, and so the like sort of s- slow things are the things I'm doing first, right? Like the things that don't need um, like you don't need to worry about timing with with starting a shop, right? Um, you, you do need to worry about it if you're like you know f- trying to beat a boss in a dungeon. Um, so I'm not going to try and render that in sale or something, um, but eventually. Yeah, yeah, like it's uh, it's kind of like for the if you if you can for like the more sort of fast things from like yeah. declaratively kind of like sort of specify it, and then yeah, it's and just then like just it doesn't change, it's, right? It's kind of like like React, right? Um, but like in a good way, um, <laughs> where it's like you you just have this this huge namespace, right? That you that you can jump to. Um, like I think I was I was talking to Ted recently about one of these. Um, like there's these this idea of having a, a, a coin in your path, right? And that coin is basically, has, has like the, a rendering, a, a part that can be rendered as like basically a sim link into somewhere else in the tree. Um, and so, so you can really build some, some interesting like uh, fight scenes with that, right? Where it's like you, you know, um, like just a, a, ASCII, ASCII uh, fight scenes, right, in the dojo. Where, where you just have this huge namespace that you're just updating. Um, like maybe, maybe there's a huge like guild war going on, right? Um, and you can see that guild war happening like in a, in a separate session in Dojo um, as, this, as this like huge tree of, of different um, pieces updating as people you know, 
get killed or cast certain spells or um, you know uh, win or lose. You know. Yeah, I was wondering if you could talk more about like what's on your wish list for networking. I um, everything that Joe talked about. <laughs> like he's basically building like the kernel level stuff that I'm trying to like stupidly build in in user space. Um, like the whole the, the whole uh, I mean it's it's obviously more complicated and there's there's concerns that like I don't have to care about um, from from like a user space pr perspective. Uh, but like the whole idea of of everything that that's being done with Ames is very similar to like how I want to update things in user space. Um, like there are like the idea of of not having to do things twice, right? Um, the the sort of like connection based uh, uh, thing you have to you have to build when working with traditional games um, is really difficult to mirror in Urbit, and I think that's a good thing because it makes you rethink the entire game um, and have to like redefine your like the the sir file that corresponds to like that web two version, um, which basically just gives you a new game. Uh, I, th I think that these, like starting from old games is really fun because you could see this like kernel of, of, of an idea that they had about how to build games um, that has been like completely lost now. Uh, and so, so yeah, I think, I think just having, like listening to Joe talk about like how, um, like the history of all this stuff, um, really like that's how, I, how, how I've been thinking about building games is, you know, going back to Ultima Online, to MUDs and, and just um, thinking about how we can bring those into the, into the new world without like just copying them, right? Like I don't want the same exact game, I want like the urban experience of playing this game. Um, I think it would just be better because you, you retain your state, right? So I can just shut down my urban at any point and boot it back up and I have that same game um, with the same saves, the same stats, um, and even possibly even like a bifurcated tree that like where I don't have to listen to what the, the, the server is telling me I have to update to, right? Like if I, if I like, you know, say specific, um, a specific version of a specific class, right, that I liked playing, like say, say I really liked playing a monk or something, and then they nerf it in, in like an, an update. Like I don't, have to, I don't have to update to that. Um, this is like one of the greatest things about Urban. You can just say, don't give me any more Ames packets. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think that really answered your question, but. <laughs> Questions? Let's give it up for a little while for everybody.